Hey, what's up everyone? Sean Murray here, and today we're gonna talk about wakeboarding terms. I wanna help you not only sound like you know what you're talking about, but actually understand what you're saying. So let's go all the way back to the scurfer. Here it is, this is actually my first scurfer. This is the grandfather to the wakeboard, and uh, I even have it signed by Eric Perez. It says, Sean, scurfs up, Eric Perez. That's pretty cool if you know who I'm talking about, you understand how cool that is. This was the first board uh, that really started wakeboarding, and this is the scurfer Rage. Came originally with three fins. I like to shred it with just one fin, and I still have my first board. Then the next step in technology was the ski board, the first Hyperlite. This was the first compression molded ski board, and it was the next step. And what it did is it allowed you to have uh, a better carving board. And since you had a heel strap, originally both heel straps are on here, but this one disappeared. Um, but this was a, a gift from my buddy Ryan, and this board really changed the game because with this heel strap, the board would stay attached to your feet when you want to do some flips and spins. So there was a lot of different technology in between this and our current wakeboard. This is my 2022 Hyperlite Murray board. And as you can see, the technology has stepped up a little bit. So I'm gonna go through these things as quickly as possible so I don't lose your guys' attention. And of course, always appreciate it when you guys like and share these videos. If you don't subscribe, maybe consider doing that and hit the notification bell so you know when we're putting out more videos. So. On this board, we have the tip, that's the top, or some people refer to it as the nose, and the tail. So my front foot is my left foot, and my back foot is my right foot, and if you're a left foot forward rider, it's referred to as regular, and if you go right foot forward, it's called goofy foot. When you're riding with your non-dominant foot forward, we call it switch. Some people call it fakie, but that's kind of a term from the past, from skateboarding, um, so we mostly are gonna just call your non-dominant foot forward switch. So then we have our toe side and heel side. That is the side of the board that the toes are facing. This is your toe side edge, and this is your heel side edge. And what that helps you determine is when you're cutting around. What is cutting? Well, that has to do with how you're carving through the water. What is carving? Well, it's edging. So those are the three terms that you're gonna hear. Cutting, carving, edging. That means when you're on the board's edge and car carving or cutting through the water. So if your toes are digging into the water, we call that a toe side edge. If your heels are digging into the water, we call that a heel side edge. And that is going to apply whether you're just cutting around or if you are actually going into the wake. So we have a heel side jump. That's where most people are comfortable getting air for the first time. And then we have your toe side uh, jump. So those terms are just how you're getting around. So talking about the bindings, this is the Hyperlite Team X binding that has the closed toe. We also have it in an open toe. This is the open toe binding. The benefit of closed toe is that you have better control, but it's a smaller size range. And you only get about two sizes per, the, per size of the closed toe. The open toe is gonna have a bigger size range. Um, not quite as much control in some people's opinions, but there's even some top end riders that ride an open toe boot. So it's really a personal preference thing. You'll see some cable riders riding in a system binding from Hyperlite, and that allows you to have the boots on your feet, click in like a snowboard binding, and then you can walk around the cable park when you're not clicked in, or you can also just ride those behind the boat. These are the inserts. There's gonna be a few different packs of inserts that allow you to put your bindings in different places, so you get that stance and angle right. You can also go check some of the videos I have on how to set up your wakeboard stance to make yourself more comfortable for you. We also have fins. These are your fins. They're gonna help the board gain control. You don't have to have fins. In fact, you can go watch another video I have on fins and uh, the benefits of using them. Um, but just make sure that the pointed end is facing towards the middle of the, uh, middle of the board. I've seen some people have their fins backwards. They still work, but that's not how they're intended to go. Now let's talk rocker. Rocker is something you may have heard. Rocker is how a board is bent, kind of like the bottom of a rocking chair. There's a few different ways to bend boards, and what I generally like is, feels like what's called a continuous rocker. So continuous rocker means that the board has one continuous bend from tip to tail, it's the same radius. The way that they measure that rocker is if it's sitting on a flat surface, the distance from the highest point at the tip or tail to that flat surface, most boards are gonna be around between two and a half to three inches of rocker, so that much. Now, they can accelerate the rocker by putting a flat spot in between your feet so that the board, as you get from your binding out, 
you have a flat spot and then to get to that two and a half to three inches, the board really has to take a lot of bend. So that's called three stage rocker when you have a flat spot. The bigger the flat spot, the more aggressive that three stage rocker is. I tend to like those softer landings and that's why I still have a little bit of continuous rocker through here, but once I get from my binding out, that is where the rocker is accelerated. So I have a bit of a blend of a three stage feel with the kick, but also the soft landings of continuous rocker. Wakeboard ropes. Something that's a little bit different about wakeboard ropes is that we want them to be static and not dynamic. Static means they don't have stretch. So you can use a normal water ski rope, but that's gonna have a little bit of bounce. And you'll learn from my coaching that keeping the handle still is very important. And this uh, kind of rope, this is a Hyperlite Murray. You don't have to go buy this, but you can. It's what I like to use. Uh, but it allows you to keep that handle still because of that static, non-bungee feel. So you got your handle. Um, you can also get this with a wrap handle. Allows you to do some tricks where you unwind with the rope, hanging onto the small handle. And then you have your main line. That's where you can determine what length you want to ride. So let's talk about the boat. Now, you can get behind anything and have a great time, whether that's a fishing boat, a pontoon boat, a, a PWC, or the world's best boat, the Super Aeronautique G23 Paragon. That's what I have here. Super thankful for it. But like I said, you can get behind anything. Let's talk about some of those terms. Now, the boat, the very front of it, it's called the bow. The rear of it is the stern. The starboard is the right side, and the port is the left. Now, how can you remember port? being on the left and starboard being right. There's two tricks that I've heard for that. Port has four letters, so does left. And starboard, the star of the boat, is the driver, the captain, so he's on the right. Now, not all boats necessarily have the driver on the right, but wakeboard boats, normally they're gonna be on the right side. So then you also have a few things that are on wakeboard boats, or a lot of them, and that's gonna be the tower. The tower is something that allows us to get our rope not only tied high, but also to get some of the things up and out of the way, like your board racks. Your board rack is something that you can hang your wakeboards, your wake surfers up and out of the way so that they're not cluttering your boat. And you can also get your bimini. The bimini is the thing that we get shade from. Not all boats are gonna have it, but I sure love the ones that do because I like to be out of the sun. Ballast, you may have heard that term. What it refers to is actually extra weight we can add on board so that we can displace more water. The heavier the boat, the more the boat sinks down, the bigger the wake or wave comes up. Some boats are gonna have ballast tanks built into them. Some you can add weight to them. Uh, and a way that I like to take my, my wake and wave to a bigger size is adding my lead wake bags. Yeah. Okay, so this is 50 pounds. The nice thing about these lead wake bags is that they're compact. They can go into compartments and really allow you to still have your storage. Um, but the reason I use these lead wake bags is when I don't have a bunch of people to simulate that extra weight, it allows me to get my wake and wave that much bigger. So you can go check them out. I'll put the link in the description below. Now lastly, let's talk about the engines. There's a lot of different ways to power the boats and where to put the engine, but there's three main ways. You have your outboard engine. That's where you got the big engine hanging off the back, which is in most fishing boats. You have an inboard boat, where that allows the engine to go inside the boat. And those are really uh, used in a lot of ski boats and puts the engine right in the middle, has a big engine cover over the top. And then the drive, tr the drive shaft goes straight out the, the bottom of the boat. So the prop is fixed. And then there is a rudder off underneath the back of the boat. Then you uh, also have a different version of that where they spin the engine backwards. It's still inboard and they have that. It's called the V drive. It's because the, the, Transmission goes one direction, faces out the other way, and it creates this V of where the shaft meets the transmission and allows the engine to go in the back. Wakeboarding and wake surfing, we really like the V drive uh, inboard because it allows that big social atmosphere, but also all of the weight in the back. So uh, that's the, the preferred way in wakeboarding and wake surfing. Now you also have lastly the IO, inboard outboard. That's where you have half of the engine in the boat and then the rest of it is hanging out the back and that's where you can see part of it turning off the back and it doesn't have a rudder um, because that prop actually can turn on that power part of the boat hanging out the back. So outboard, inboard and IO. Well, there you have it. And hopefully you guys have a little bit more knowledge that maybe you didn't know, or you can share this with someone. Of course, like I said, always appreciate it when you like and share. And if you don't subscribe, maybe consider doing that. Hit the notification bell so you know when videos are going live. If you guys have questions or comments, feel free to put those below. No matter what you're doing, always enjoy your ride. Peace.